Section 4.1, Related Rates. So in this section, the big idea is that we are going to have several variables that are related. And our main job, our primary job, is to find an equation that involves all of them, a way to relate those different variables. Now, sometimes things that are constant stare at you, like this in number one here, a constant rate of two centimeters cubed per second. Sometimes things like that stare at you. However, they don't always. Okay, so let's just begin with this problem. A spherical balloon is being filled with air at a constant rate of two centimeters cubed per second. How fast is the radius increasing when the radius is three centimeters? We want to pay attention to this last statement. This tells us that at some point, at some point, we are going to take the radius to be three and dr dt, how fast the radius is increasing, we want to know what that is. At some point, now at the very end, we're going to take that to be the case. Okay, the, the radius of our sphere, our spherical balloon, is not three centimeters, but at some point it will be. So let's just begin by drawing a picture. This is a, a good strategy. Now, I happen to know an equation that is going to relate this right here, the constant rate, that is dv dt. That's how much air is going into the balloon. So I know a way to relate the volume to the radius, to dr dt, dv dt, all that. Just go ahead and take the equation volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now we know dv dt, we want to know dr dt, so what we need to do here is take the derivative of everything here. We're going to take it implicitly. So this will be dv dt equals 4 pi r squared dr dt. So every time we take the, the derivative of a variable, we want to put in the dr dt dv dt, um, again, an implicit derivative there. Now, at this point, once we've done this, we need to look at what information we have. We know that our dv dt is 2. We know that at some point our r is 3 and our dr dt we don't know. Well now that we've taken the derivative okay, we are going to plug some things in and solve. So dv dt is 2, 4 pi our r value is 3, 3 squared dr dt and dividing both sides by all that right there. That would be a 36, so dividing by 36, that would be 1 18th, and we're dividing by pi, and that is dr dt. So it is changing 1 over 18 pi centimeters per second. So again, look for the variables that we have. Now these we used at the very end. Okay, this is what's given in our problem statement, how fast is the radius increasing when the radius is 3 centimeters. This stuff we use at the end, but we can use the variables that are given there in order to determine what we need to solve for. Let's look at number 2. An airplane is flying overhead at a constant elevation of 4,000 feet. A man is viewing the plane from a position of 3,000 feet from the base of a radio tower. The airplane is flying horizontally away from the man. If the plane is flying at a rate of 600 feet per second, at what rate is the distance between the man and the plane increasing when the plane passes over the radio tower? And my little hint here is draw a picture. So just go ahead and start. We have a man standing. And I'm actually going to draw two pictures. One is what I immediately recognize from this, and the second is what I can, what I can use to rearrange to have an equation to solve. All right, so I've got this man flying he's underneath a flying airplane and this airplane is above him and let's draw that like an airplane okay there's my airplane it is at an elevation of 4,000 feet and it is traveling at 600 feet per second now there's also a radio tower here let's just put a radio tower, something that looks like a tower at least, a tower over here, and he is at a distance of 3,000 feet from the base of that tower. Okay. 
Now, if I were to draw a triangle here, because we are talking about the rate, the dis the between the rate, the distance between the main and the plane is increasing. So, at some point, we've got a triangle like so this, where the distance between the main and the plane is an x. The height okay, of the plane is s, and I'm going to go ahead and use, I will use y for that. y for that, and s there. So I can see there is a triangle that's going to happen here. Now, a better triangle to draw would be this. All right, is a right triangle. My man is here. My plane is here. Okay, my plane, and I've got my radio tower over here. I don't really draw that well, but whatever. Now, this is at a constant height of 4,000 feet. We've got our X and our S. So what we end up needing to do is use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and make x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Now we do know that the y value is a constant. And that doesn't depend on anything else. This is just a constant elevation. So x squared plus 4,000 squared equals z squared. Or I guess I used S here, didn't I? Okay, now taking the derivative of both sides gives me 2x dx dt equals 2s ds dt because the derivative of any constant is zero. Now the information that I know here is the plane is moving at 600 feet per second. So dx dt is 600. My x value is when, he, when it passes over the radio tower, so that is going to be 3,000 feet. That's a fixed distance. Equals 2 times, I don't know what s is, and I also don't know what ds dt is. So let's go and use this triangle. What if I know at some point that it's 3,000 feet here? What is the value of s? Well, because this is, this is a right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem tells me that s is going to be 5,000. So that gives me a total of 6,000, so that is 36, let's see, 3,600,000. Okay, equals 10,000 ds dt. Dividing by 10,000 on both sides, ds dt, that is the distance between the man and the plane, the, as the crow flies, shortest distance there, that is changing at a rate of 360 feet per second. And if you want to check out OpenStax Calculus Volume 1, there's the link right there at the bottom of the page. That book is free, and it is a pretty good book. It goes very well with these notes. All right, number three. A rocket is launched so that it rises vertically. A camera is positioned 5,000 feet from the launch pad. When the rocket is 1,000 feet above the launch pad, its velocity is 600 feet per second. Find the necessary rate of change of the camera's angle as a function of time, so that it stays focused on the rocket. All right, so we've got our rocket. All right, there's my rocket. It is traveling. Actually, we don't, let's not deal with that yet. So we've got our launch pad here. And some distance over here, we have got a camera. So our camera is facing this. Now, let's see. It's 5,000 feet from the launch pad. 5,000 feet from the launch pad. When the rocket is 1,000 feet, 
it is moving at a velocity of 600 feet per second. And so we're going to use that information at the end because that is at a given moment. Now we want to know the necessary rate of change of the camera's angle. Right, so we really want to know something like this. This camera is facing this. We want to know what theta is. All right. I see a triangle in there. We want to find d theta dt. All right. So a way we could possibly relate this is tangent. Tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent. So that I'm going to give that as y, as a y value over 5,000. I don't know what the height is. Now, at a given moment, I do know what the height is, but I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. So, so in general, the height is y. So I'm just going to use y for that, which is 5,000 tangent theta equals y. Now let's go ahead and take the derivative here. That would be 5,000 secant squared theta d theta dt. equals dy dt. Now we are told at a particular instant at a partic particular instant the y value is a thousand feet and in that dy dt is 600 feet squared. So let's plug in what we know. 5,000 secant squared theta d theta dt, which we want to find. Our dy dt is 600. All right, now, given this triangle we have, I'm going to go ahead and draw another one. With 5,000 and 1,000, I can find the secant. So secant is 1 over cosine. Now, I'm going to need the hypotenuse of this to do this. So if I square 5,000 plus 100,000, that is going to be 26 million. Now that simplifies to 1,000 square root of 26. So the secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent over 5,000, which means secant squared theta. Actually, I'm going to spare that. This is going to be 1.04. And actually, that reduces down to 1 fifth. So square root of 26 over 5. So if we square that, that's 26 over 25 which is 1.04. Okay, so plugging that value in, let's replace secant squared theta 1.04. Now, dividing both sides by 5,000 times 1.04, 600 divided by 500, divided by 1.04, that is Hold on, that can't be right. Oh, by 5,000. 600 divided by 5,000 divided by 1.04 is 3. So d, theta dt is 326. Now, this is how the angle is changing, so we're going to say this is in radians. So that needs to change at 326 of a radian per second in order to keep focused on that rocket. Right, the last question we're going to look at in this section. Water's draining from the bottom of a cone-shaped funnel at a rate of 0 0.03 feet cubed per second. The height of the funnel is 2 feet and the radius at the top of the funnel is 1 foot. At what rate is the height of the water changing, water in the funnel changing, when the height of the water is 1 half? 
Right, so we have been given dv dt is negative 0.3 feet cubed per second. The height of the funnel is 2, that is a fixed amount, and the radius at the top of the funnel, so this is the whole funnel. The whole funnel we have this information. We're considering all of that. The radius at the top is 1. And we want to know dh dt when the height is 1 half. All right, so drawing that all out, we have our funnel. Our height is 2. Our radius here is 1. And volume is leaving at 0 0.03. Now, what we are going to need to use is the volume of this funnel. So this is a cone, so this is V equals one-third pi r squared h. Okay, now we know at a particular moment that the height is 2 and the radius is 1. And at that another particular moment, we know that the height is 1 half. But we don't know in general what the height is going to be. So let's go ahead and draw something going on here. And this is going to be a similar tri set of similar triangles. We've got a relationship between R and H. Let's go ahead and write this out. This is R divided by H is 1 divided by 2. Meaning that in general R is 1 half of the height. Now I do this because I have two variables. Well, I have volume, I have radius, and the height. Ideally, I only want one of those variables in my equation that I'm going to, to work with. So let's go ahead and replace h, or r, with h over 2. And the reason I'm replacing it with, I'm replacing the r variable is because I actually want to find the hdt. That would help a whole lot. So the volume is 1 third pi r squared, so that will be h over 2 squared times h, which means our equation is, that'd be a fourth, that'd be 1 12th pi h cubed. Now let's go ahead and take the derivative, that would be dv dt equals 1 fourth, we'll go ahead and make that pi over 4, h squared dh dt. Now we know at our particular moment that the height is one half. So replace the and dv dt, we know that as well. So this leads us to this equation, negative 0 0.03 equals pi over 4 one half squared dh dt, which solving that equation we get something like negative 0 0.48 over pi. And that is a feet per second. That's how fast the height of this cone, the vault, the height of the of the water, the level as it as time goes on. Okay, that is the end of this section. So I would highly suggest you read the book because there are a couple other examples there, but these four really cover the big classes of things we can come up with. So trigonometric identities, we had to use that in number three. We had to use the Pythagorean identity for um, Pythagorean theorem for example two. Uh, a simple volume formula and then here we've got something with similar triangles. Those are the kind of the things you want to keep in mind as you go through this. Alright, that is section 4.1 related rates.